you are about to um, see something that nobody else gets to see unless you are in this room, so welcome. Right before we begin worship, we will pray, but before we do that, uh, I'm just going to refresh you on sort of our shared agreement of how to be in this space together. I am not wearing a mask right now, but we are asking that everybody in this space continues to wear their mask over their nose and mouth for the entirety of the time that you're here. This is for your safety and the people around you. Um, unless we can be 12 feet or so apart, we are going to be masked. You'll see that later. Good morning and welcome to worship here at St. Giles Presbyterian Church. 
We are glad to have you with us, whether you are joining us online or you are able to be present with us in this space. So welcome. Just a couple of announcements before we enter into our worship service today. I want to celebrate the tremendous gifts of this community. Yesterday, we um, helped raise more than $3,000 from the pumpkin patch, which is a record based on all the information that I have seen, and that is tremendous work by a team of volunteers. We do continue to need help in that patch, especially on Monday and Tuesday from 4.30 to 6.30. If that's something that you can volunteer for, please know that there is a link um, on the church website or in the e-news or through that Sign Up Genius, and you can go and say, I would like to help. We will help you get all the information you need to help people in the community have um, pumpkins to decorate their house and also support the missions of this church. So thank you everyone who's been involved so far, and thank you for the tremendous ways you continue to support our church and its ministry. Another way that you can be involved today is we are starting a children's music ensemble with the hope that they will um, play as part of our Children's Sabbath Sunday on November 8th. The children will be meeting today at 4 o'clock. Just verifying that time. It's 4 o'clock. And they will be playing percussive instruments, not singing, so the COVID um, guidelines still apply of wearing masks and distancing. But we're going to do this in such a way that we have some music ensembles that children can participate in. And we hope that if you have children, you will explore that possibility and join us as well. Those are the announcements that I have for the good of the people. So we are so glad to have you with us. And let us continue to prepare our hearts and minds for worship and welcome. Good morning, St. Giles. Let us now join our hearts, minds, and spirits in a spirit of worship as we join together for our call to worship. Come, all ye people, come and praise your Maker. We have come. For... Let us give to God what is God's. Together, together let, let us, us praise the Lord. Lord. Let us now join in our prayer to confession, reading the prayer that is printed together in our bulletin. God of the covenant, you call us to follow your will. We have gone astray in many ways. You call us to avoid hypocrisy, yet we are often hypocritical. We proclaim to follow you with our words while our actions betray your instructions. Forgive me. Help me to notice the many ways I wander away from your call. Bring my attention to the needs of others so I am aware of how I can live more fully as a child of the covenant.
children of God, hear the good news. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. Sisters and brothers, let us continue worship as we pray. O Lord, let your light fill this place, as it has for centuries. Fill our hearts with your Spirit, so that we may hear your word in ways that speak and continue to speak. Open our eyes, open our hearts, open our minds, this day and evermore. Amen. The scripture reading today follows immediately after the passage that we shared last week in the Gospel of Matthew. So listen as the Pharisees try to ensnare Jesus in a clever trick and trap, and how Jesus responds. Then the Pharisees met together to find a way to trap Jesus in his words. They sent their disciples, along with the supporters of Herod, to him, and asked, Teacher, we know that you are genuine and that you teach God and God's way as it really is. We know that you are not swayed by people's opinions because you don't ever show favoritism. So, tell us, what do you think? Does the law allow people to pay taxes to Caesar or not? Jesus, knowing their evil motives, replied, why do you test me, you hypocrites? Show me the coin used to pay the tax. And they brought, brought him a denarian. And Jesus said, Whose image and inscription is this? And they replied, Caesar's. And then Jesus said, Give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar, and give to God what belongs to God. When they heard this, they were astonished and departed. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Oh, good morning. It's, um, my name is Susie Cothran, and I'm going to be giving you the children's message this morning. And I have a very special guest. This is my grandson, Sam. Oh, hi, sweetie. Would you say hi to all the children and people? Hi. Here? Thank you. Today, we're going to talk about promises. And I know that you know what a promise is. Tell me what a promise is. A promise is, um, a promise is that you're going to do it, but not right now. Okay. And have you ever made a promise to me? Yes. Tell me a promise that you have made to me. Mm -hmm. Go to you when you tell me to. That's exactly right. To come to me when I call you. Mm -hmm. And how about to your daddy? Have you ever made a promise to your daddy? Of course I did. Okay, like what? Like, promise I'll go downstairs. Uh huh. And what about the TV? Have you ever made a promise about the TV? What? I promise I'll. <laughs> Turn off the TV and turn on the TV. Okay, that's good. You'll turn off the TV when the program's over. Okay, I've made some promises to you. You a red marker. Okay, I've made some promises to you. I have promised that I will keep you safe. And I have made a promise that I will love you forever, forever. No matter what you do, good or bad, I will always love you. That's my promise to you. Aw. Aw. Thank you so much, Sam. It's so nice of you. <laughs> okay, would you step down now? I think we're done for our part. A promise can be between two people, like Sam and me, or between Sam and his dad, or a promise can be between lots of people. Lots of people. And I want to talk today about a very special kind of promise, and that's when we make a promise to God. And God makes a promise to us. 
And there's a special word for that. It comes from the Bible, and it's a special word called covenant. Can you say that out loud? Covenant. Oh, that's great. That's right. So a promise that we make to God and to each other is called a covenant. And this morning, we're going to have a baptism. And in baptism, all of us make a promise to help the, the person who's being baptized. This time it's Finch. And we promise to tell him about God and to love him, love him, love him. And God promises to love him forever. And that's what a covenant is. It's a special promise that we make to God and God makes to us. Okay, let's pray. Put hands together. Dear God, thank you for loving us. Thank you for loving us. And for giving us the covenant. And for giving us the covenant. We promise. We promise. To love Finch. Love Finch. And to teach him all about you. Teach him all about you. You. We love you, God. We love you, God. Love Amen. Amen. Last week, we talked about covenants. And last week, we focused on the covenant that God has made, saying, I will be your God and you will be my people. We talked about the parable that Jesus gave about a wedding banquet where somebody showed up to that banquet but was not wearing the appropriate clothing and was sent out. And Jesus said, many are invited, but few are chosen. We talked about our responsibility as individuals to live into that covenant. This week, we are also talking about covenants. But unlike last week, where this is a covenant between you or I and God, this week we are focused on how we make covenants as a community. So it's between as I say, you, or as people here say, y'all, I think, I, and God. The group covenant is really important. But more important, I think, is that you know this. God doesn't make covenants on stone. God makes covenants with water. And here's what's interesting about water. If I threw rocks into this font, first of all, that would be really a painful way to baptize the baby in a minute. But watch what happens as the water is poured. Did you notice that as water is poured, it doesn't really stay where it's supposed to be. It sort of splashes all over the place. And water is brilliant. Ooh, and this is nice warm water. Somebody very much cares about Finch. <laughs> water takes the shape of the vessel that it's in. And I think God's covenants are always more about people than they are about policy. And so when people come to Jesus and try and trick and ensnare him, by locking him down to laws that have form that is restrictive, Jesus, like water, slides and evades and opens up new possibilities. If you've ever had a leak in your house, you know how wily water can be, how it can find its way through tiny little things and get to you wherever it's trying to go. Water is a brilliant symbol of covenants, because it is flexible and fluid. So keep that in mind whenever you hear somebody say, God is inflexible and unmoving. Remember the way that God makes covenants, and that covenants are always about the people and not about the rule. And there are things that matter to God, but the only thing in Scripture that is listed as an unforgivable offense is something called blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. And I think blasphemy against the Holy Spirit doesn't happen when we say, I don't like the Holy Spirit. But it happens when someone says, I don't believe in the Spirit. That the Spirit of God is not flexible 
or cares enough about people to move and be reshaped and have its heart broken by love like water does when it is poured. So keep that in mind. Jesus will also say, give to Caesar what is Caesar's and give to God what is God's. When we give to God what is God's, we are living into love and life and faith. And when we give to Caesar what is Caesar's, we are doing what we need to do as citizens in the world. So here's all I'm going to say about government. I think it's important that you pay taxes. I think it's important that you vote. And I think it's important that you follow the laws and then use the laws that we have to change the systems so that justice looks like God's justice when those laws aren't in line. And because I think voting is important, I'm going to give you a little bit of information. If you're in South Carolina, you should have already registered to vote. I don't know of another way you can register at this stage. But I do know if you're registered to vote, you can get an absentee ballot if that's something you're interested in. And the deadline to do, make that request is October 24th, which is coming up. You can do early voting. And I'm sure you can find more information about that. But if you need information, ask me. I'll help you find the information you need so that your voice is heard and that you can give to Caesar what is Caesar's. And then you can also vote in person at your polling place if that's what you want to do. But please vote. It's an important time, and that's an important thing for us to do. Now, more importantly, though, I think is that we give to God what is God's, and that's tricky because that is much more flexible and unclear. It's easy to follow laws when they are written down. It's harder to follow laws when those are laws of love. So when the Pharisees try and trick Jesus here, it reminds me of being a kid in sixth grade, because every day in sixth grade we would show up to our classroom, (coughs) and my teacher would have a riddle of the day. And one of those riddles uh, went as follows. He said, you come to um, a place where there are two doors, and standing in front of these two doors are two guards. One of these guards always tells the truth. One of them always lies. One of these doors leads to eternal life. The other leads to death. And the guards say you can ask one question, and then you must walk through one of the doors. So the question is, how or what question do you ask to make sure that you go through the right door? It's one of those, like, tricky little impossible puzzles, right? similar to the question that the Pharisees come up with to ask Jesus. They say, is it right for us to pay taxes? Because they know if Jesus says, yes, you should pay taxes, he might be breaking some of the religious law, because maybe he's not giving everything to God that he could be. They also know if Jesus says, no, you shouldn't pay taxes, they can get him in trouble with the civil authorities. And so he doesn't really have a good option. But Jesus, being wise— fluid, says, look at the coin, whose face is on it, whose words are on it. Give to Caesar what is Caesar's, and give to God what is God's. Our job as children of the covenant is not to create trouble and snares and questions and try and be gatekeepers of God's love. Our job is to live into it. In a moment, we will have a baptism— where this little baby will be brought into this community, and you and I will be asked to make promises, to promise to raise him in the faith, to care for him, to show him God's love, to teach him about youth group and about the pumpkin patch, but more importantly, through Sunday school and discussions, so that he sees that there are no limits, but wild possibilities of expansion that God's love is for all, and that our task is to share that love with all. And I tell you what, if you come and you try and trick my kids or anyone else in this church, I'm going to be like an angry little mama bear that comes at you. I'm going to say, this is just not who we are. We're going to have what I have always been told are come to Jesus moments where we sit down and I say, look, I appreciate that you love God so much and you have a zealous faith, but you cannot be a stumbling block, a roadblock, a challenge 
that makes somebody else feel like they don't get to belong. Because God is fluid, and love is what love is. When Moses asks who God is, God simply replies, I am. When Jesus speaks in John's gospel about who he is, he often will say, I am. So please, as we walk into the covenant, as we seek to give God what is God's, know that we are giving love back to love, that we respond in faith. When Meg and I came to this presbytery, we had to go through a series of gatekeeper questions with the Committee on Ministry. They wanted to make sure that a couple of pastors from New York weren't just a couple of pastors who didn't know what they were doing. And so we each had, I don't know, an hour and a half conversation with the COM. And at one point, they asked me, why do we baptize babies? And me being me, smiled, and I said, well, have you ever seen a baby? They are so gosh darn cute. It's probably a sin not to baptize a baby. And everybody on the COM looked at me like, what? And Meg also looked at me like, what are you doing right now? And I said, no, seriously, babies are very cute. But we baptize babies not because they're cute, but because we know that God chooses us and calls us even before we are able to express that. We know that in making baptismal promises and living into the covenant, we are also making a community promise. That we will raise a child in faith and that it takes more than just a family, whatever that family looks like, to to raise a child. And so we need you. Just like you need each other. Because we are church when we are church together. We need to be able to be understanding. We need to be able to listen. But more importantly, we need to be able to practice love in its fullness and breadth. So please, when you make the promises you will make today, not only make them to Finch, but also renew them as promises that you've made to each and every child. And remember that you too are a child of God, and that somebody has made those promises, and that's why you are where you are. And don't be afraid to ask questions, to do the study, to figure things out. But also, have the grace to not find traps and snares. I went on to pass the examination from the presbytery. Obviously, I'm here. And I know that their job was to make sure that everybody who comes into this presbytery can answer difficult questions. And that's part of their job, but I don't know that it's part of our job as a community. Our job is love and grace and to be like these living waters for all. So take that seriously as we prepare to make these promises, not only to Finch, but as we are reminded of the promises that were made for us and for each other. Let us continue worship as we celebrate what it is to be children of the covenant and to be in this walk of faith together.
forsake the Lord, the fount of living water, choosing broken cups that cannot be Hear these words of Scripture. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Lord of all, who is above all and through all and in all. In baptism, God claims us and puts us a sign on us to show that we belong to God. God unites us with Jesus Christ in his death and resurrection. And by the water of the Holy Spirit, we are made members of the church, the body of Christ, and joined in Christ's ministry to love and peace and justice. On behalf of the session, I present Jackie Finch Fisher to receive the sacrament of baptism. Adam and Meg, do you desire that Finch be baptized? We do. Through baptism, we enter the covenant that God has established, and within that covenant, we are given new life and guarded from evil, nurtured by the love of God and nurtured by God's people. As we embrace that covenant, we turn from evil and turn to Jesus Christ. And so, Adam and Meg, I ask you, therefore, that you profess your faith in Christ Jesus to be on behalf of Finch, to confess the faith of the church and the faith in which we baptize. Wow. Wow is right. 
trusting and gracious mercy of God, do you turn from the ways of sin and renounce evil and its power in the world? Do you? We do. Who is your Lord and Savior? Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior. Will you be Christ's faithful disciple, obeying his word and showing his love? We will. This sacrament lays solemn obligations upon you, the people of God. Will you be faithful to your calling as members of the Church of Jesus Christ, so that Finch and all other children may here may grow in the knowledge and love of Christ? If so, will you please stand? Now with the whole church and on behalf of Finch, let us state what we believe using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. everlasting. Amen. As we continue to stand, let us pray together. We give thanks, eternal God, for you nourish and sustain all things through the gift and life of water. In the beginning of time, your spirit moved over the watery chaos, calling forth order and life. You led Israel out of slavery through the waters of the sea into the freedom of the promised land. In the waters of the Jordan, Jesus was baptized by John and anointed with your spirit. By the baptism of his own death and resurrection, Christ set us free from sin and death and opened the way to eternal life. We thank you, O God, for the water of baptism. In it, we were buried with Christ in his death, and from it, we were raised to share in his resurrection. Through it, we were reborn by the power of the Holy Spirit. Send your spirit to move over this water that it may be a fountain of deliverance and rebirth. Wash away the sin of all who are cleansed by it. Raise Finch to new life and embrace him into the body of Christ. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon him that he may have the power to do your will and continue forever in the risen life of Christ. In his holy name, in Christ's name we pray. Amen. (laughs) You may be seated. What is your child's name? Jackie Finch Fisher. Jackie Finch, child of the covenant. I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. May the triune God dwell and descend upon you now and forevermore. Amen. Hey, buddy. Can we go walk a little bit? Huck, do you want to come with us, or do you want to stay with Daddy? You want to walk with me? Here, let's go say hi to everybody. Family of St. Giles, I present to you Finch. Finch is Meg and Adam's child, God's child, but Finch is your child. You want to come with me? Okay. And Huck, too. Finch is a year old now. But he was born into a church that loved him, and he has moved into a church that is loving him and will continue to love him. Say hi. He may be a year old and a little bit more squirmy. Maybe that's why we baptize little babies. (laughs) Right now, I think he's a little shell-shocked. Patrick, you know, I grew up in the Baptist tradition, so I was trying not to dunk him too much. but. But this is your family. And your family has promised to raise you and to love you and to teach you to play basketball or soccer or funny youth games with you because this is your family now. 
And so we hold to this promise as we say hi to Finch, as we welcome Finch into the family of God. Let us continue to do so as we hold on to that covenant promise that we will take care of him and that we will love him almost as much as your whole family loves you too. Amen. Jackie Finch Fisher has been received in the Holy Catholic Church. Through baptism, God has made him a member of the household of God to share with us in the priesthood of Christ. I charge you, the people of this congregation, to nurture and love Finch, to continually share the good news of the gospel with him, and to help him know and follow Jesus Christ. Amen. We truly are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses. Children of God who have been baptized throughout the ages and people of God who continue to be the church. One such person who is part of such a great cloud of witnesses is Mike Payne, who is sharing with us today a little bit about his journey and how God continues to speak, act, and be in the world. Welcome, Mike, and thank you for sharing with us today. Thank you. Good morning, St. Giles. My name is Mike Payne. Growing up as a Presbyterian, I attended church and Sunday school regularly. And like many of us, when, once I left home for college and grad school, I attended worship infrequently and certainly didn't read the Bible very often. When Susan and I uh, came to Greenville, moved to Greenville in 1982 with three young children, uh, we joined St. Giles and we, I joined the friendship class to set a good example for my children. At the time, the class was led by Doug Bowen. I don't know how many of you remember Doug, but he and Mary Lou were charter members of St. Giles. They were salt of the earth kind of people. There were no pretensions, some would say perhaps not much sophistication, he had that well-known South Carolina, Georgia accent, had probably never seen a GQ or Esquire magazine, and his clothes, I'm sure, weren't from Brooks Brothers. He worked for Clemson, organizing and coordinating the large textile shows that were common there and held annually uh, in, back in the 60s and 70s. He was one of the smartest men I've ever met. At the time, he was leading the friendship class and doing Bible survey courses. He would take each book of the Bible and he would explain the history and the culture and even the geography in the setting uh, in the Bible. I love that. I had never approached the Bible with that kind of understanding before. Needless to say, I was inspired to continue with the friendship class and my Bible study and have enjoyed working with wonderful teachers like Bob Fronberger, Wes and Peggy Lawton, Bob Taylor and Ted Morrison, among others. I would like to challenge the rest of St. Giles to renew their Bible studies. How can we be good Christians if we don't know the basics of our faith in the Bible? Let us make the Bible a priority in our families and with our children. Join a Sunday school class. Teach a Sunday school class. Participate in a Bible study group. Perhaps read the Bible as a family and use it to guide our lives. We will be a better church and better Christians if we do. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Sisters and brothers, let us continue worship with a time of prayer. Lord, we are part of such a great cloud of witnesses, people not only in our nation, but around the world, who serve and celebrate your word and sacrament in all their different ways and traditions, and yet bear witness to your love across cultures, across time, and across geographical space. Help us as a nation as we approach and live in through this time 
for it is a divisive time where people seem so quick to anger and so quick to judge. Slow us down and still our breath that we might listen more than we speak and that we might understand more than we try to be understood. Give us the patience and peace which passes understanding instead of the righteous vitriol which is so easy to access. Help us to care for one another, sister and brother, and to never lose sight of your reflection which is present in each and every one of your creations. Help us also to have grace when we stumble and to notice those stumbles. For in noticing, we have the ability to change and the world could be a better place. We pray for all who are impacted with different forms of sickness at this time. For those who struggle with ailments of mental illness and affliction, O oh God, help us to have peace and hope and understanding. Let the counselors who uh, engage in talk therapy not be overburdened. And let people who need speaking have the ability to find those who can help. For those with physical ailments, give our doctors wisdom, our scientists the tools that they need, and our communities all that we can to listen and practice the safest behaviors possible. Continue to guide us and bless us as we seek to care for those who are least, as though they are the greatest, for in your kingdom they are the greatest. God, be with us this day and evermore, uniting us as one in your love. As you taught your disciples to pray, we pray as well, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Sisters and brothers, I'm so grateful to be able to be church with you, to be able to walk this walk that we walk together, and to be on this journey of faith. And I'm so grateful because we are here because of the gifts that you have shared. I want to encourage you, as Mike encouraged you, to be good stewards of all those gifts. Take time to read and explore the Holy Scriptures. Spend time in that Bible, for you will find answers to riddles and questions that people might throw at you in that text. You will also find the breadth of God's love in the pages of Scripture, and even more so in Bible studies with other brothers and sisters who have different perspectives. So take that as part of the invitation to stewardship. Also know that we are called to give and share of our time, our talents, and our treasures. So please continue to give generously as you have. You see that there are QR codes and other ways to give, whether you give online or in person or by mailing in your gift. All are welcomed and put to good use as we continue God's ministry together. You can also find information about how we are doing and how uh, the financial picture of the church looks by either finding that on screen or in your bulletin. It is with the deepest place of gratitude that I say thank you for the work, for the ministry, for the service, and for the glory of God you continue to build. Thank you. Friends, we have heard the word proclaimed through music and through the reading of Scripture and through the proclamation at the pulpit. We've seen the word enacted in the covenant of baptism, and now we are sent not just to go out these doors, but to go out into God's mission field. And so I ask you, church, what does the Lord require of us? To do justice, justice to, to love, love kindness, kindness, and, and to, to walk, walk humbly, humbly with, with our, our God. God. God is good. All the time. And all the time, God is, God good. is good. Sisters and brothers, here's your charge. 
just in case you've been pondering this the entire time we've been in service, the question you should be asking those two guards at those doors is just ask, which door would the other guard tell me to go through? And then go through the other door. But your charge is not to create clever riddles. It is not to ask questions that are traps, but questions that are driven by the spirit and the curiosity of God. Questions that probably sound more like, how is God calling me to be a loving witness in this situation? How does God love this person in a way that I find hard to love? How is God pushing me to see the glory, to see <coughs> the beauty, to practice my faith? Where am I being called to love? And where am I being pushed out of my comfort zone in order to grow more into my faith with each moment? Those are the questions that lead to growth and a life of faith which is worth living. So go out into the world surrounded by God who loves you, Christ who redeems you, and the Spirit who sets you free. And may the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and evermore. Amen.